You sure the third one's contained? Yes. Unless they figured out how to open doors. So I was brushing Basil earlier and I thought this guy is the subject of my most popular video ever on my knife related channel, my cat video about Basil. It kind of blew up, it did really well. So I thought people might like an update and I thought I might like another 700,000 views, that'd be cool as well. So hey, everyone wins, right? When I reviewed Basil the previous time, I had about four different types of commenters. The first type were people just chunky boy, big chungus, ooga booga, all that sort of good stuff. And the other, you know, second group of people were the flip side of that. You guys are the worst. He's too fat, irresponsible, all that sort of stuff. We've never tried to fatten Basil up. We've only ever fed him one meal a day. Back then we were feeding him some grain-free um, meat-based dry food. Uh, and, you know, if we have some meat, we'll cut some raw off and give it to him as well. Um, we changed from that grain-free to some uh, vet-recommended food. Yes, recommended by a physical vet in person, not by a YouTube commenter. So the vet switched us to some science diet food and some cuts of raw meat or chicken every now and then. And yeah, he's lost two kilograms since that. So hopefully the first two types of commenters will um, you know, be at peace with this now. Seven kilograms for Basil at his size, and he is a large example of his breed, is totally fine. It is fine. I can see it on many, many different charts and Dr. Google's, and yes, even according to his in-person vet, Basil is fine. His weight is good. The third group of people uh, couldn't believe that we uh, bought a bred cat instead of rescuing a cat. Um, I guess it's like anything. Um, we have rescued cats in the past. We've had our share of moggies and whatnot. And I know there is an abundance of, you know, unloved cats out there, but we're good cat owners. We've never contributed to that problem. Our cats have always been well cared for and housed inside. There isn't, um, you know, we are, I guess, cat neutral in this house. Basil and Lemon are both spayed and neutered. We shopped for breed because we'd heard that these two breeds were excellent family pets. And we were right. These two animals are excellent family pets. And the fourth group of people couldn't believe that I'd used the term review for a cat and that I'd had him shipped to our house. And all I could do there is point them towards the, the dictionary definitions of the words. Uh, review is a summary of our time spent with him and the positives and negatives of that. And shipped is getting something transported from one place to another. And yeah, we got him shipped by a pet courier service that moves animals from one place to another, humanely with accreditation and things. So yeah, without giving the crazies too much more time, or just the really intense people too much more time in the spotlight, um, that should about wrap up, I think, any critiques, I hope. Perhaps even preemptively on this video. But on to Basil. So as I said, Basil's a seven kilogram, large chested British short hair cat. He costs us a thousand dollars and that's a lot to spend on a cat for sure. But to continue the, I guess, numerical based you know, mindset, that's a lot of value. People will buy a pair of shoes that make them happy for a night for $200. We've got a cat that we've invested in that is providing us daily love and enjoyment and we are providing him with love and food and uh, it's a very beneficial arrangement and if it's a thousand dollars to enter that arrangement then cool I'm totally fine with it. Basil's had his shots he is inside only we are inside only cat people or at least if they are outside we are in control of them we're pretty happy for them to just play with each other inside, chase around the, the string on the stick and all that sort of stuff for their exercise. They seem to tear around. They both get the zoomies every morning and night, running up and down. Basil will go outside. His sister Lemon's not interested in going outside at all. She likes looking out the window, but she doesn't really want to go outside. Basil basically pushes past us to get outside. 
He loves spending time with the dogs or around the dogs. He has no fear of anything, which is why we don't let him go outside without us because he'll probably demonstrate the same lack of fear towards an oncoming car or anything that would do him harm. So we always have control of our cats, whether they're inside or outside, and Basil is a largely inside cat. He gets on well with Cedric and Ada, our retriever and husky, and they all sort of have that animal indifference to each other that as much as you'd love for them all to cuddle up with each other, they sort of just ignore each other, maybe smell each other from time to time, poke around with each other, but that's about it. Him and Lemon are the same. I'm not sure if they like each other or hate each other. I'm not sure if one of them just vanished from the earth, the other one would even particularly care or notice. Basil gets very fussy when we pat Lemon. He gets very jealous, and he starts coming up to us and meowing and crying for attention as well. He's very dog-like in his behavior, and he does seem to have something of, for lack of a better word, an ego, like a dog does. So that sense of wanting more for himself, which is funny, whereas Lemon just has that feline indifference where she's not too bothered about us at all. Basil's very malleable, very pliable. He's happy to sit with you on your lap. He's happy to be dragged around by the kids. He almost chooses to be because he approaches them and puts himself in situations where it's going to happen. With regard to health problems, He's only really ever had one issue, which is he gets a slightly goozy eye every now and then. Um, then it's just one of the eye sprays and rubbing it every now and then to get any extra goop out of it. It's just breed problems, you know. It's having a bit of a flatter face than usual causes things to get bound up every now and then. It's just a part of it. He molts and sheds a whole bunch. Our house has tumbleweeds in it when we don't vacuum every now and then, so I would highly recommend you get one of these guys. This is a robot vacuum. It does a great job of just keeping that low level fluff to almost non-existent. Run it every couple of days, put it on a cycle, run it every day. Recharges itself in its dock, picks up all the fur. You still have to do a vacuum because it gets into the corners, the stuff gets everywhere. But having cats inside does require a little bit of extra uh, investment in things. Also in would need to invest, if you're thinking of having inside cats, in a good cat litter tray. Something enclosed, keeps the smells in, and you're going to be changing it fairly often as well. Our cats don't poop that much because they eat quality food. You find that if cats eat bad quality food, they're pooping all the time because it's less of it that actually gets used by their body. We had Basil on a raw meat only diet for a while, and he was pooping once every two days at the most. Um, he was literally using all of that food. But he didn't like it. He doesn't like raw meat. He just he simply stops eating it and starts meowing at you to give him the dry food. So fortunately, that coincided well with the vet saying, hey, give him some dry food too. So we did. But yeah, definitely invest in a covered cat litter tray. We put ours in the laundry because most laundries have like a screen door that you can lock and then you can put the litter tray up against it. So it kind of lets the smell stay out of your house as much as we you know, know it can, because hey, once you've been in your house for a certain amount of time, you don't really know how it smells, but I've been assured by my most earnest friends that a house doesn't smell like that horrible cat smell. So just burn an incense candle or an oil diffuser or something if you're too worried about it. But generally having it next to an open outside door and changing it often does the trick. Overall, Basil's been awesome. Lemon's awesome, his sister's great too, but Basil just has that extra level of wanting to interact with us that sort of makes him, I'm not going to say the house favorite, but he's definitely the guy in the spotlight all the time. He does lots of funny stuff. He sits upright in weird ways. He rolls around. He comes and sits on you in really awkward ways. Um, he does stuff that is endearing and we're people and stuff is endearing to us. All right, everyone, that's about all I can think to tell you about Basil. Um, a couple of other things. The brushes you see me used are a Ferminator and just a shedding comb. I think shedding comb's a generic term. Uh, the breeder that we got Basil from was in Tasmania, but is no longer uh, doing it. It was just a lady who did like one litter every couple of years and it was super irregular. So it was nothing I can send you or nor would she particularly want, you know, heaps of people asking her when her next cat is because I think she's done. So there's that. Um, apart from that, that's about all. Thanks for watching. I know most of you probably are here for either knives or um, knife related content but there's a lot of interest in the cat and if you're here just for the cat video then thanks for stopping by see you later